So do you think of yourself as a media company, a tech company, or a social network? Definitely a technology company, yeah. But you sell advertising like a media company, and you're <laughs> letting friends talk to each other like more like a social platform. How do you explain this to investors and advertisers who are here? I think the really important thing to understand is the central role of the camera and the role of the camera in the way that it's changing all sorts of things uh, that we do every day. So obviously the camera's dramatically altered communication. People now communicate visually in ways that weren't possible, you know, even 10 years ago. And it's also obviously changed uh, the, the media landscape for sure. So I think as we look at our company, we're, we're a technology company focused on innovating around the camera and that does end up impacting things like media and communication. You just announced that you're opening up Snap to integrate with developers. Pandora is one of your launch partners. You're gonna let people on Snap access Pandora and Pandora access information about users. You criticize Facebook for doing this very thing and the risk that that opened Facebook up to in terms of data privacy. Why are you doing this? We think it's really important for people to understand that they can get a lot of value from uh, you know, developer products without compromising their privacy. So of course it's all in the way that you do it. And I think one of the things that we've done with our customers is built a lot of trust over time so that people understand when they use Snapchat that we're respectful of their data and give them choice about how that's used. But why are you doing this at all? This is counter to the way you've been running Snap the past couple of years. We is it to reverse slowing user growth? We haven't yet been in a position actually where we could expand all of the great services that we offer at Snapchat into other applications and services. So it's really only now, I guess, in the sixth year of our existence as a company that we've really been able to invest in growing other, uh, growing other platforms as now, well. You've been adding users, but the growth has been slowing. Do you think this specific addition, the integration with other apps, is going to be the thing that, that revs up growth, growth again? The thing we're really focused on when it comes to growth is really our Android product, which has uh, unfortunately not been up to our standards uh, for quite some time. So we've actually been investing in totally rewriting the Android product from the ground up, and we think that this modularization of Android is really what's you know what's going to push the business forward. So that more so than the integration with Pandora and all these other apps? I think that there are a lot of things that we're working on, obviously, to, to grow the business, but as I look at a big opportunity ahead, I think getting Android right is critical for us. And what about this whole question of user data? Do you need to be accessing more data? Do you need to be giving developers access to more user data for you to really properly become a third player and compete with Facebook and Google? I think today, uh, given all the first party data we have and I, th I think our very rigorous privacy policy, we've shown that we can effectively target ads and deliver ROI without compromising uh, the, the integrity of, of user data. And so what do you have to say to Mark Zuckerberg? Do you think you would have handled his Cambridge Analytica data scandal differently? I think one of the really unique things is even from the beginning of, of our company, when we were in my dorm room or in my dad's house, we were thinking a lot about data minimization and these issues. And I think that it hasn't become clear until just recently over the last few months how important how important that is. But so are you saying from the beginning you were more cautious? I mean, there were all sorts of concerns about you know, screen grabs being taken of, of snaps that were meant to be private. I mean, there, there seems like these are issues for any app, app any any platform. Well, I, th I think if you go back to the beginning of Snapchat and really this focus on empowering people to express themselves, we believe that for you to feel comfortable expressing yourself, you need to have control over your data. If you don't know who's watching what you create, how can you feel comfortable communicating? And so for us, that focus on self-expression has really, uh, really dictated the way that we built the business over time. So you're time. saying you'll never have a data privacy issue the way that Facebook has? Well, I wouldn't say that. You know, we've definitely made mistakes and we probably will make some in the future, but I think this trust that we've built with our user base uh, over time by doing the right thing uh, will certainly help us navigate any mistakes we make in the future. Um, advertisers are also talking a lot about transparency. We just spoke to Unilever CMO Keith Weed and he said that he's really cracking down on influencers buying followers, on bots um, as fake followers. How, are, how important is that to you? You have a lot of influencers on your platform. That is really important to us and one of the things that we've done from the beginning is really focus on having um, real users and we do that by doing a lot of advanced spam and bot detection even you know as you're signing up for our service. And so rather than having this approach where I think other platforms just let uh, let these bots and fake users sort of proliferate and then just disclose the percentage of their users that they think are fake, what we do is try and just keep them off in the first place. Are you referring to Facebook and Twitter there? <laughs> I think there's a variety of platforms that struggle with those issues. You're doing a remarkable job of not uttering the word Facebook. <laughs> I assume that's by, by design. Um, so, so it sounds like you could reassure Keith Weed that he's fine in terms of influencers not having fake followers on Snapchat. Well, our advertising model is, is really different. And so if you look at the advertising, Snap Ads, for example, or even our lenses, what we really try to do is integrate advertising into the user experience. And what we found is that on other services, when they rely too heavily on influencer advertising, it can feel like you're getting marketed to all the time, even when you're not viewing a so-called ad. So the endemic ad load, per se, uh, is a lot higher on those services.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.